Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today I had a normal video with all the graphics and all of that stuff playing to do. Then all of a sudden a really big story dropped and I just had to get it out to you as quick as I can. And this is pretty much the only way that I can do that. But before I get into that, I wanted to quickly announce the winners of the Gamer Meld 100,000 subscriber giveaway. Unfortunately, so far only three have gotten back to my emails, although I did just send them last night. So try to make sure to check your inbox as well as potentially your spam folder. Either way, the three that did get back to me, I have time. Tycho, Evan, and Shabam. I do hope I pronounced that correctly. I do apologize if I didn't. Regardless, a big congratulations to them and thank you all of my subscribers for getting me past the 100,000 subscriber mark. So first up for today, we have a really interesting story from Tech Power Up that basically says you may be able to flash your 2060 Super and 2070 Super to their next step up GPU. For those who don't know, both of those GPUs are actually based off of their next step up die. So the 2060 Super is based off of the TU-106, which is the same as the 2070. Now the reason Tech Power Up figures that you might be able to do this is because while going through GPU-Z support for these uh, RTX Super cards, they found that both the 2060 Super and 2070 Super had three device IDs. Now that may seem really weird, but if you remember a story not too long ago I covered where Nvidia had actually stopped production of their non-A die variants. For those who don't know, Nvidia had two separate dies for quite a bit of their Turing GPUs. One was a non-A variant, one was an A variant. The A variant actually allowed third-party partners to factory overclock the GPU, while the non-A variant didn't. This was actually one of the main differences between the, you know, if you, you see third-party cards, they have a 2080, but they have quite a bit of different ones at different price points. This was one of the main factors determining that price point. Now, with this in mind, if we go back and take a look at the three different SKUs, it kind of makes sense. One is for the new 2060 Super, 2070 Super, and then one is for the A die and non A die. And what this tells us, or it likely tells us, because I will say that this is ultimately speculation on Tech Power Up's part, but at the same time, they did send something to Nvidia, and Nvidia basically said, oh, that's, that's weird, we'll find out. But Tech Power Up hasn't heard anything back. At the same time, I'm really not sure how long it's been since they sent it. They could have done it just a couple days ago and just haven't had time to hear back. But as of now, what makes sense is that basically board partners are going to NVIDIA and saying, hey, here's my 2070, turn this into 2060 Super. And there's actually a little bit more evidence for this. If we go down here, you can see that the uh, differential value is only 40 hex from one model to another, which is the bare minimum to have a different SKU. With all of that said, you might be wondering why in the world would they do this? Why would they take a more valuable card and make it less valuable? Well, there's actually a couple reasons that I can think of that is, and Tech Power Up seem to cover them both. First, it could be just to ensure that they have enough inventory in stock, and then second, and this I believe is the more likely scenario is that right now super cards are the biggest card. They're brand new so people naturally want to get the super card over the other one and also whenever people think of the super cards they're thinking of a better value. So even if say you lower the price of the 2070 people may still get the 2060 super. Also from what we've seen these are end of life cards so there's a pretty high chance that they're just wanting to go ahead and turn these into super cards. Clean. Basically, with all of that said, there's a slight chance that with some modification like a BIOS mod and a little bit of desoldering, you could maybe turn your 2060 Super into a 2070 or 2070 Super into a 2080. Of course, we don't know for sure, we need to get some more information, but this is a really big find and could be huge if it ends up being true. And that's not all that's interesting today because AMD may have gotten a massive win over Intel. Originally reported by Benzinga and then later Tom's Hardware, an analyst for Lynx Equity Partners actually found, let me show you right here, through the hardware supply chain that Google specific server boards are being built with AMD's Epic server CPUs. Now this is a huge deal because Google's been using Intel for a really, really long time. Now you may be wondering why in the world Google is randomly doing this now. Personally, I think one of the biggest reasons is security. For those who don't remember, Google's uh, Project Zero security team was actually one of the first to find Meltdown Inspector CPU flaws. And these flaws are hardware and almost specific to Intel CPUs. Also, Google was one of the first companies, and I actually remember, uh, I believe I discussed this in the video, if I didn't, I at least saw it when the uh, recent MDS flaws came up. Google was one of the first companies to suggest disabling hyperthreading on their Chromebooks until they figured something out. Basically, this is a major issue that's happened more than once in a very recent time span, and Google is almost certainly not happy. 
Now, another issue that Tom's Hardware discusses is uh, apparently Google engineers are having some issues with Intel's management system for their chipsets. Basically, Intel is just having problem after problem after problem. AMD comes out with some very competitive CPUs for quite a bit cheaper in a lot of instances. So Google is taking notice, and this is huge for AMD. I mean, it's really big. Intel's data center group is actually $6.1 billion of their $19.2 billion in total revenue of Q3 2018, and I believe it was pretty similar difference in Q1 of 2019. Basically, this is a huge part of Intel's business, and I guarantee you that Google is a massive part of that segment of the business. So AMD getting that would be a really big win. And it's actually funny because Raj Kumar, the analyst, has already cut his price target for Intel from $65 to $45, and he's got AMD at $40. Basically, Epic, Ryzen, the Zen architecture has basically completely turned AMD around. Now, you might also be wondering why in the world am I discussing this? Well, AMD's Zen architecture was effectively made for server CPUs first. And a lot of tech from both AMD and Intel starts in the server and kind of trickles down to more mainstream CPUs. So if Intel is forced, if they're having to make much more powerful server CPUs, that's going to trickle down into the mainstream market. So this is once again showing why competition is so important. Lastly for today, we actually have confirmation of AMD's upcoming X599 and X590 chipsets. Remember not too long ago, there were some rumors of an X590 chipset, and apparently they're likely true. This comes from an ASUS employee who discussed this with video cards, and apparently they were able to confirm the Prime X590 Pro and ROG Strix X590e. And then we also have uh, ASUS preparing the Zenith 2 line for the X599 chipset, which I believe somewhat confirms the recent story that said that AMD was going to be releasing their third gen Threadripper cards in October. It obviously doesn't confirm the date or anything like that, but it's, it's pretty clear that they are working on this and it's coming soon. As far as the difference between the X570 and X590, we really don't know much. We'd originally thought that the X570 wasn't going to have PCI Express 4.0 and the X590 was, but the X570 does, so it's really hard to say. We could potentially be seeing more I.O. and a few things here and there. Who knows? Either way, this is really interesting because it proves that AMD is getting serious about the higher end of the industry. Instead of focusing more on the mid to low end, they're wanting to compete at every level. And that's obviously fantastic. Once again, competition is great. So while that does it for today, let me know what you thought about the news and let me know if you have an RTX Supercard, uh, if you see anything weird about it. I really wish that I could have actually checked myself to see the device IDs, but unfortunately I'm not able to because I don't have any cards and video didn't send me any. Regardless, this is some really interesting stuff and I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I know I ramble a lot in these ones, but I really wanted to get it out to you as quickly as I could. And as always, have a great day.